Oh, welcome back everyone for another Destiny 2 build session, where today's topic will be pondering on the thought of cosplays, specifically fallen cosplays and how effective such a setup can be for generally any content in mind. Now ask yourself this, how often do you create a build based on the idea of another fictional character from another game or within the game itself? For me, it's quite rare as the method of doing a cosplay in Destiny 2 for example is quite limited by what we can and can't do. Back when I used to be a Dark Souls player, I used to cosplay a lot which brought ample new and fun ways to keep the game fresh. We are now at that point of the season where players are either finishing a few things up or playing other games until new content is made available. Those who are still here but don't know what to do next may want to give this fallen based build a try as it's not only fun to cosplay as one of your enemies but it packs a lot of synergy from weapons to supers. To give you an idea as to what's to come, utilize the Magical Backer's Light Shift ability, we can gain 10% Arc Weapon Damage Increasement for 10 seconds against those I use my Arc Weapon on. However, when combined with Stasis, we can stack this damage up to 21% instead for 10 seconds as well. Now, adding Cold Heart's Continuous Damage Increasement, the longer you stay on our target, and a Arc Weapon of your choice with Warp or Attach, such as a Heavy Weapon, Ideally, Temptation's Hook, you can easily mow through a Overload Champion's health without the use of Overload mods needed. Now, that may sound not so great on paper, but when applied to other combatants in game, that extra boost on damage will allow you to eat through enemies' health in a matter of seconds. If this sounds good to you and you're up for something new, then stick on by and I'll show you the ropes. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then do leave a like and a sub for more content like this in the future. I would really appreciate it. Starting off with the subclass, I would recommend you use Revenant for the combined ability that Stasis will have when Mask or Backwards is in use. Mask or Backwards states that when dodging, you gain a 10 second arc weapon boost, but at the same time, those affected by Stasis via Slowed or Frozen will become debuffed by 10% or 21% if the target is slowed and the arc weapon boost is active. Now, common sense will tell you that Stasis is the best choice to go with since you can earn double damage if, for example, we pop our super and let it rain havoc. On top of that, we have a lot of customization choices available for the user in terms of what they like to invest in via fragments. Whispers of Fissures provide an extra damage bump to those frozen and shattered. Whispers of Shards provides a boost in grenade regeneration when Stasis Crystals are destroyed. This is important as we plan to use our grenades a lot for damage in general. And Whispers of Rending provides us with a 42.5% increase for kinetic weapons to those frozen, which is also important for keeping damage up in areas where kinetics aren't that strong. Add in Winter's Shroud and Touch of Winter's aspects, and you can see why using Stasis will offer us the most in terms of what and how we like to play this build out. However, we can opt in and use other subclasses if we wish, if you want to use a more curated set of perks there and then. And there is one subclass that does suit the build quite well. Take Way of the Trapper or Pathfinder for example. Both these subclasses offer the user a great source of becoming invisible and team buffs which we can use to dip in and out of danger when things get rough, but we can then reposition ourselves and get a boost in the making. A vanishing Step, Vanishes Smoke, Combat Provision, Snare Bombs and Lockdown are great perks that can make the curated build we are using even more stronger. On top of that, using Super will provide us with a 30% debuff, which we can then stack with the extra damage boost from Brachris and Cold Heart's damage increasement. Only downside to this is that you won't get the stasis extra damage as well, unless you opt into using a stasis based weapon as well. Now, how you use the two subclasses can vary from content to content, which is great as we can fit into any situation when the time comes. But showing what options are available for using Mask or Back of Us will provide a better understanding as to how wide the exotic is in the build. For weaponry, I've given the build a great number 4 as to how we can utilize those buffs and timers provided, and I believe that Cold Heart and Temptation Hook are the key to making the build great. My prime move in the build is the 7th Seraph Carbine with Slide Shot and Vampage, and except from creating cells, doesn't have that much use within the build compared to everything else. I chose the Carbine as it will be a great weapon to counter antibiotic enemies at long distances and it will be able to proc Warmind Cells for extra damage. The Warmind Cells creation is useful as it offers us another layer of options for extending the build through more damage, protection or debuffs. In my slot, I opted in the use of Power Rasputin mod for a global 10% weapon buff that can stack with Mask Backer's buff for even more damage and so forth. Because our kinetic weapon will be used for the bare minimum, you can swap this area out to your liking while still benefiting the build as a whole. Alternatively, 
Hangjiri, Kermal Rush, 7th Seventh Officer of Revolver, and Nightwatch are also great connected to use, except that Chroma, Nightwatch, and Hangjiri can't produce cells on their own, so you may need to revise some of your mod choices. Our secondary and main weapon of use will be the Cold Heart Trace Rifle, and I chose this weapon specifically as not many players use this weapon, although it has a very high TDK and exotic trait stacks pretty well with any weapon boosting bonuses provided. The perk Longest Winter increases the weapon damage the longer its beam is on its target, and the case any enemies is used upon, will allow you to generally zap away their health in a matter of seconds. Because of this and how strong you can get when bonuses are applied, it makes using Mask of Backwards a lot more fruitful when against a champion, ultra or boss, as you can start off with using Mask of Backwards to get damage modifier up and running, and then shooting Cold Heart on the target will increase the damage even more for that brief 10 seconds. But that 10 seconds is enough to do a number of minor to ultra enemies then and then. It's very effective when pulling this off, as in a way you don't have to worry about building up your weapon's damage to take out most enemies there and then, which is a downside to using Cold Heart. With the mask attached and the right tactic done, you can get the ample boost in damage and then carry on with relative ease until you generally run out of ammo. For heavy, I'm using the Temptation Hook Sword with Tyler's Blade and Vulpal Weapon, which will be combined with the rest of the gear to provide even more damage when up against more tougher enemies. With Vulpal attached, we will be gaining a 15% weapon damage bonus to mini bosses or bosses in general, which when combined with backwards can allow us to dish out even more damage than the sword is packing. The heavy attack allows for a small but continuous damage cloud to those caught within his radius that I plan to fully use with the Lucan Blade mod for faster regeneration. This area can be swapped for other arc weaponry instead of your choosing, but this weapon as a whole fits the theme and start with the build extraordinarily well. For stats, as we plan to utilize Master Backwards Perk buff for applying extra damage to those affected by stasis, it will be good to focus on discipline, intellect, and mobility at the highest level possible to always have that effect going. As we're using stasis though, we can use certain fragments to provide us with a free buff to certain stats areas as long as it fits into the build and you're happy to use them nonetheless. Focusing on the basic, mobility has been placed at 70 for a fast passive regeneration after Backwards Cooldown is re enabled again. As we will be using Mask a lot, we can go all the way to 100 for a near instant regeneration, or stay at 60 to above so you can gain enough back but at the same time have enough room to slot in other mods to support. For example, instead of going all the way of adding in mobility mods to make up the majority of the stat, I have simply gone with some armor that has some good stat investment and then added in the powerful friend mod for a plus 20 in mobility to reach my goal. I highly recommend you use the Powerful Friend mod as that's a free 20 plus stat investment, it's quite huge in the long run, and allows better ease with the build. If you don't have that then just invest in the mobility mods and a high stat armor for mobility. Next we have our grenades which are at 60 and this won't need to go any higher or lower, as this area is perfect in terms of regeneration speed and investment already made for this area. We have Whispers of Shards, Fragments, Distribution, and the Elemental Light mods which all provide some form of energy that will be directed back to my discipline stat, and does provide a big enough boost to keep the stat going as long as possible. Now this doesn't need to be any more higher than it currently is, but further investments are welcomed. Intellect now is kept at 60 and this area will be used a lot but only through passive means of regeneration. No mods or perks are improving this area further as what we currently have is generally enough. Uh, leftover wise, we have the Hammer of the Warmind mod to cover us for endgame content against Overload and Unstoppables since we have room to invest into them, but also we can produce cells freely. We lastly have the Lucan Blade mod that as mentioned earlier will regenerate our heavy attack at a much faster pace which will equally help us in taking down tougher enemies faster. You may want to add in this sword scavenger mod as well depending on how often you plan to use your swords, but if you don't have the space then generally don't worry about it. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. Head, we have Mobility, a Power Ass Region mod. R, we have Discipline, Anti-Barrier AR, Fastball, an Element of Light mod. Chest, we have Discipline, because I've done no times too, and Hammer of the War my mod. A leg, we have Minor Discipline, Invigoration, Trace Rival Scavenger, and Powerful Friends mod. Cloak, we have Minor Mobility, Distribution, and Lucan Blade mod. Pretty much the basis of the build has been explained earlier within each section of the setup and gear used, and should give you an understanding as to what is happening and how. All your attacks will be relying on two key areas, just stasis and mask backwards, 
with both these two areas stacking for even more damage with a time frame, or give you the option for increased damage individually. How you do this and apply this in game is honestly down to you, as the build can work in all environments with success. The point of the build isn't to build up and do crazy amount of damage within a 10 second time frame, as that's not possible with some of the setup I'm using. However, we are utilizing the continuous damage boost for Cold Heart and Temptation Hook, and making sure that both weapons get ample time to shine. Both of these weapons are popular by the masses, but are limited in choices of usage in all content, since Cold Heart and Temptation can be easily replaced with something stronger. Now, if DPS is what you're looking for, then this build may not be it for you, and you may want to look for something else, which many of my other videos can help you with. But if you want to do continuous damage and generally be effective within a short time frame, and be helpful in your team, then this build will definitely serve you well. Remember, all we need to do is dodge and slow or freeze a target, and that will be enough to get the ball rolling for all of your weapons. And this has been very effective against all types of enemies, except from bosses, who I have a slight issue with. Taking out a minor, major, or ultra enemies are fairly simple to build, and easy to take on solo, with the dodge allowing us to reposition ourselves so we don't take too much damage when surrounded. Plus, we can create a wide number of orbs of power as we kill, which will be used for regenerated super for an even bigger AoE blast that we can combine with Mask or Bacchus for even more damage. But against the boss, specifically the midi kind, they can and will wipe the floor with you because of the lack of protection involved. Now you can go ahead and slide in the protective light mod as we do have the voice slot available. However, even that at times won't be enough for reducing damage because the sheer damage that's been directed at us. Now, if it's just you and a boss, 1v1ing each other, then you'll be completely fine, of course. But then at the same time, if the room is filled with minor enemies, then this is where most of the struggle will appear. And that is the main core issue with the build. It's great when doing solo damage can mop up multiple enemies with ease, but it lacks the ability to clean house when there is too much enemies around. Although our super and my cells are there to help with this issue, these require time to create, and in some instances, this won't be available straight away, or all the time. The success of the build relies on making sure that you start off strong and hit hard the moment everything is in place, rather than passively waiting. You have a set duration put in place the moment you dodge, and this should be the indicator to go in and do as much damage as you can before it runs out. You can do a lot of damage within 10 seconds, but you need to be aware of how vulnerable you can become when you have no dodge available and no damage boost. Good thing though, is that this kind of build you won't be taking into most in-game content, as it lacks features to support it, but it still stacks up pretty well against the most armoured and formidable enemies around, so I highly recommend you give it a try and see where it takes you. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.